Hey there, highly spirited here, and I'm going to be doing some highly charged videos showing you our experience and our journey of integrating some solar panels and a battery system into our lives. Hey, so here we go, and welcome to our world of solar. And it is a world, isn't it? I mean, this is a big ass subject to try and digest. So, with that in mind, um, you know, just try and please try and refrain from asking loads of questions immediately, like, uh, "Why did we do that? Why did we place that there? Why did we buy that?" Oh, if it was me, I would have done it like this. I mean, it's all very well and good, but this is our journey. So, do please try and be patient with me. So I've always loved the idea of um, solar panels and who wouldn't really getting that free energy from the sun? Well, um, the thing is, it is quite a commitment. It's a nice dream to have, but if you do it, you've got to be prepared for the bill to pay for it initially. <sighs> to be honest, uh, we're in that position where we could just about afford it but we were also motivated by the fact of the skyrocketing energy prices and they do seem to be staying at quite a high level. Um, in saying that again also, we're looking at this as more of a marathon than a sprint. Um, even more so when it comes to things like the, the return of investment for something of this magnitude. And another aspect that comes with solar power um, is the eco-friendliness of it all. Yeah, it all sounds quite good, doesn't it? But I'm not going to sit here uh, and bang the drum about when it comes to things like the carbon footprint and CO2 emissions and all that. Looking at this in the long term, the bigger picture, hopefully by having some solar panels generating our electricity, yeah, we hopefully we'll be doing our bit for the environment. So... Where to start with our PV system? Where indeed? Now the biggest issue, the biggest problem we've got in all of this world of our planning and uh, progression is myself. Yeah, because I am literally the world's biggest idiot. So yeah, we've taken our time with looking at bits and pieces, especially on the internet where it's quite uh, a good source of information. Um, things like Nigel from uh, does some YouTube videos. Uh, his channel is the Solar... No, it's not. It's the EV and Solar Puzzle channel. That's what it is. So I forgot. Yeah, now his videos have been brilliant for me. Um, just goes to show you how these kind of videos are supposed to be made. So if you get the chance and you're into this, then please go and check his channel out. Right. So, after doing some bits and pieces of research online, uh, I ended up finding out how much energy we used last year. And for 2022, we used 2,116 kilowatt hours of electricity for that year. Yeah, now that doesn't sound like very much, does it? No. Uh, that's because, mm, unfortunately, the hot water and the house heating are both dealt with, yeah, you guessed it, the good old-fashioned gas boiler. So those two were put to one side just for a second. Now, another quick look online, I found that a 3,000 watt system, solar system, would produce somewhere around 2,500 kilowatt hours of electricity in a year. Right, so using that as some kind of basis, ooh, okay, I reckon we could fit on our roof 10 panels. And if each panel was somewhere around 350 watts, then yeah, okay. I was thinking this could work. Woo, you still there? You hanging on in there, are you? Hopefully you are. I do tend to waffle on a bit, don't I? With these kind of uh, facts and figures that I've already got in place, uh, yeah, this system was obviously not going to completely satisfy our energy needs. No, but it was going to do a fair chunk of it. I think it was never going to be completely off-grid. 
uh, we will always have some backup, which is uh, it's always good to have backup anyway, isn't it? Now, and also, it's it, I think we need to look at this as just being like a great aid to our energy consumption, our less reliance on the grid kind of attitude, you know, where, where we can harvest what we can and use what we can from the sun and then feed in from the grid as and when we need it. So that was a good... Um, Good starting block there, I reckon. Um, so there we go. Armed up to my goofy teeth with all these facts and figures. <laughs> Again, I hit the internet to try and find any local companies around that would be able to do or make, suggest, put in place um, a PV system for us. And uh, so, yeah, OK. I reckon it's time for a fresh recap and just go and have a look at some dodgy graphics in a very creepy voiceover as well. So, like most households out there, we get our electricity from the grid. It comes into the house through a smart meter and then into a consumer unit and then into the house where we can use it as we so wish. And we want to add to this system some solar panels. But when these things are generating electricity, it's in a DC voltage. So what we need is a dedicated solar inverter to convert this into an AC voltage. From here, it goes into a submain box and then into the consumer unit and then into the house. So this kind of setup should be OK for us. But I do see there's two common types of systems available, a hybrid one and an AC coupled system. Now, if you've looked into these or have even got one yourself, there's a probability you're going to favour one or the other. For myself, I do see some pros and cons with both systems, but in the end, I think I might just go for an AC coupled system, which involves adding another AC inverter that's linked to a DC battery. So this means that if we are not consuming all of the energy from the solar panels, then this system will detect that and divert it into charging up the battery. And when the battery is fully charged, and if we are still not using all of the available energy coming from the roof, again, this system will detect that and start exporting this electricity into the grid. Which, if we've got our export tariff set up through our energy supplier, then yeah, we'll be getting paid to do this. But my thinking is, what happens when the sun goes down? <whistles> yep, obviously, the solar panels can't produce any electricity. So this is where the battery is going to come in really handy, because we can now draw from this and use it in the house. Now, this AC inverter is rated at 3 kilowatt hours for charge and discharge rate. So of an evening when we've got the lights on, the TV on and probably the oven as well, we will be getting close to the limit of what this system can do. But we can try and stagger the usage of high energy consuming appliances. But in the real world, yeah, that's probably not going to happen all the time, is it? So you have to be slightly realistic with this. And if we do hit the limit of the system, that's when we'll immediately start drawing from the grid to top up the shortfall in power. Also, the same thing goes for when the battery has been pretty much depleted of its energy, the system will automatically switch back onto the grid. So unless we recharge the battery up overnight on a cheap rate, we will be on the grid until the sun comes back up again. And a little bonus about this kind of system means that if the sun is shining, and we've got charge in the battery, this will mean that we can draw power through both of these inverters at the same time. Right, so yeah, that did look an awful lot like some kind of corporate promotional video, didn't it? But you get the gist of it, you get an idea of what we want to do. So with this little plan and even less of a, an idea of how to go about it, we just boshed out and got in contact with three different local-ish companies to see what they could do for us. Anyway, so yeah, they came back, all three of them actually. First one, mm, quotation was a little bit on the high side for us, so we went, oh okay, we'll put that to one side. Um, the second company came back 
and they were very short and sharp. It was just like, yeah, you want solar panels? There's your price, all right? So that didn't really fill us with much confidence. So we'll put that on the pile as well. Third time lucky, you betcha. Third company was somebody called Eco Bubble. Yeah, Eco Bubble. Yeah, it's a good little name, isn't it? They came back, and I don't know if this is a generic or a standard response, but they emailed back with um, uh, details, a little pack that we downloaded and printed off and, you know, went through it. And it had all, everything in it, all you can imagine. The products. All broken down, reviewed, all the stats and specifications of it, the predictions, the forecasts. I mean, you name it, everything was in there. It really was a little eco-bubble of information. That was brilliant, but... Again, you get that adrenaline rush. <laughs> and then after you give it a little time to sink in and then you withdraw from it a little bit and you think, oh, that's a lot of money. Is that really for us? And then you start going into it again. You think, yeah, this is a, such a good idea. And, yeah. and it's, anyway, so we seesawed like this for probably a couple of months. Um, and then we kept getting wind of everybody around, you know, they were just going mad. It was going crazy for solar panels and stuff and availability was getting less and less and companies were busy. And I was like, God, you know what? Let's do it. Let's get in contact with them and see what they say. And yeah, sure enough, Eco Bubble came straight back to us and went, yeah, we can do that for you. And we're like, oh, OK, thanks very much. Brilliant. Um, what about stock? You went, no, 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 we've got all the stock. Okay, that's superb. When are you going to be able to do this for us? Because we're looking months ahead now. Um, and the timeline from when we said yes um, was only probably a month and a half. But yeah, about, probably about two months, actually. Um, and <laughs> believe it or not, the date of the install was going to be uh, Christmas week. Yeah, how bizarre. And in my mind, because they are quite busy, I mean, they were so busy, in fact, on their website, they actually stopped any inquiries to do with PV systems. They were absolutely chocker, and they didn't want to overstretch themselves or let anybody down, so they did, um, yeah, stop any more inquiries. So we were quite lucky, I feel, to still um, think that we wanted this, and they were letting us um, have it, basically. So, yeah, that was very good. Anyway... So yeah, it was Christmas week, they were going to install it in my mind, they were so busy that they wouldn't be here until probably mid-January, if not even early February. Right, so what happened next? Well, you're just going to have to wait for the next episode to find out, aren't you? Is it going to be installation day when they said it is going to be or not? Oh, the suspense. Oh, anyway, thanks ever so much for watching. And until next time, make sure you keep on shining.